In this problem, we're told that we have an 80 pound resultant force and this 80 pound resultant force lies along this AA line. And this AA line is in the horizontal direction. We are also told what we want to figure out what the magnitude of P is, what the magnitude of T is, and what this angle theta is. And this angle theta represents the angle from the resultant to P. But we're also given a condition we're told that we want to figure out what these values are when P is a minimum. The magnitude of P right here is going to be a minimum. And this is a very easy problem to solve once you know the steps you need to take. But if you don't know the steps to take, you can really spend a lot of time trying to figure out where to start. So for us, what we're going to do is we're gonna start by drawing a picture. I'm going to draw an 80 pound force. And I'm going to draw a line which represents a lot of possible choices that t could be so t lies somewhere along this line so this angle right here is going to be 30 degrees and i'm just going to pick a few points i'm going to say let's choose this point this point this point this point and this point so what i'm really saying is okay this could potentially be what t is or this could potentially be what my vector t is now, if any of these, it could be any point along this yellow line, but let's look at this point first. If this is the correct point, then that would mean that P would have to go from that point to the end of my resultant. If this was the correct point, it needs to go from this point to the end of my resultant. So the same with this, same with this, and same with this. So when we do that, we need to figure out which of these lines is the shortest value of P. And it turns out that P is always gonna be the shortest value when we look at this perpendicular line. So P is a minimum when P is perpendicular to T. So let's draw this again. So this is my 80 pound force. This is going to be my value of T. This is 30 degrees. And then I have a perpendicular angle of P with T. So this is perpendicular. And this represents the triangle I want to solve all my values for. So now, how do I figure out what theta is? Well, theta is this angle over here. It also means it's going to be this angle right here. Now, I know that all interior angles of a triangle are going to add up to 180 degrees. So if I subtract 30 degrees, I subtract 90 degrees, then I know theta will be equal to 60 degrees. So this angle right in here is uh, 60 degrees, and that's correct. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, how do we go about figuring out what our values of P and T are? So I'm actually gonna draw this again one more time, just so it's easy, easier to visualize. And in this case, I'm going to slightly rotate this triangle so it aligns more with our expectations of what X and Y are. So this right here will be my value T. This is 30 degrees. And I just need to figure out what, uh, this is my vector P. So these are 90 degree angles. And how do I solve for P and T? I know what my hypotenuse is. This is 80 degrees or 80, 80 pounds. I can either use the law of sines or I can recognize this is a right triangle. And because it's a right triangle, I can use Sakatoa. So let's look at T first. Let's just for illustration, represent all of these as opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. So here's my hypotenuse, here's my opposite, here's my adjacent. So that's just, so it's in this form right here. And if I want T, T is adjacent, I have my hypotenuse, I need to use the cosine. So the cosine of 30 is going to be equal to adjacent T over hypotenuse 80. I can solve for T, I get T is equal to 80 times the cosine of 30. 80 times the cosine of 30. Oops. Is 
is going to be equal to 69.3 pounds. So this right here is 69.3 pounds. I'm gonna do the same thing for figuring out what P is. Now for P, P is my opposite, and I'm going to choose to use the sine. So I have the sine of 30 is equal to P over 80. So P is going to be 80 times the sine of 30. And I'm gonna put it in the calculator, but we know that the sine of 30 is 0.5. So 80 times the sine of 30 is just going to be 40. So this value right here is equal to 40 pounds. And that's the answer. So if P is a minimum, P is going to be 40 pounds and T is going to be 69.3 pounds. And P needs to be 60 degrees up from the resultant. Now, what you need to remember when you're doing these minimum problems is this rule right here that you will have that minimum distance with those two vectors when they are perpendicular to each other. So if they're perpendicular to each other, they're, they will have a minimum distance between the resultant and the forces that you're looking for.